Transmission. Hey guys, what's up? This is Chase. And Trevor. And this is the WandaVision recap podcast that we're doing here. What up, Trevor? What's up? How you doing today? Chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Having a having a swell one. Yeah. <laughs> having a cold, cold yeah. day. It snowed a fuck ton in our uh in the our past, city. Like two weeks. It's been terrible, dude. We had one absolute monstrosity biblical level sto- snowstorm it was like literally biblical <laughs> 14 and a half inches God. on january the 25th that's so absurd it was literally a record right oh, that sounded loud it was literally a record <laughs> for lincoln of most snow in january it was ridiculous the last time it was beaten was in 1971 <laughs> Right, I think fifty years ago. I uh, I I think I might have given some degree of those stats on an episode. Oh shit! Because the the Recap. snowstorm interfered with the pod. Did it? It was a whole thing. I won't even get back into it. But wow. it was terrible. Um, but we're not here to talk Fuck about the snow. snow. The snow won't stop us. <laughs> Fuck the snow. We still watched Wandavision this last Friday. Um, it was the fifth episode. We're kind of in the second half. We're in the second arc. Yeah, the second arc, I, I, if you will, the whole show has sort of been flipped on its head as of the last episode. It is literally not the same show anymore as it was before. Right. The beginning operated in this sitcom fashion, quite literally, mm-hmm. with a couple cursed ass moments as we've come to refer to they, like, them. They sprinkled as. one in like every, I don't know, it was like two, two an episode, the first mm-hmm. one, then it progressively it just, just gets more and more fucking cursed. It was nuts. Um, and now it's gotten so cursed that it's like we've reached reality. It's, it's, be, it's <laughs> become full circle cursed yeah. to where it's, it went so cursed that it's not even cursed anymore. <laughs> we, it's, what, they, what they did is they explained all the so cursed, cursed that it made sense. Yes. Um, and, but don't get me wrong. We get a lot of more cursed scenes, probably our worst offenders in this episode. Literally the most confusing and the most awkward Yes. But they're still awesome. They are. Um, But I don't know. I guess there's not a whole lot to get into before we even touch on the episode. So let's just hop into it. Let's just get into it. Let's just hop into it. So we're in the 80s now. Bam. (laughs) Bam. I called Um, it. What was the show you were referring? This is like Full House. Full House. Every show. I mean, like, obviously in decades, shows Mm. are just going to all be like the same. Right. But But each like generation that they go through kind of mirrors in like a specific show yeah. that actually came out during that time which i think is fucking awesome yeah and uh i guess i just i'm not a full house watcher i loved full it's house it's an 80s show is it yeah it's eight, 80s. i'm pretty sure 80s 90s 80s okay. if it didn't come out in the 80s it's set in the 80s yeah um what do you think they're gonna do for the 90s episode <laughs> if that's gonna be the next episode i don't know 90s fresh prince <laughs> that's a good one maybe but what what would the vibe even be? It'd be like racist. I was about to say, there's no black people in this <laughs> other than Norm. Other than Herb. Or Ner- <laughs> Norm and Herb. <laughs> Norm and no, Herb. Right, though. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I mean, are like fucking Seinfeld. Know, saved by the Bell. Yeah. Seinfeld. <laughs> the school. <laughs> yeah. The kids are in school. Yeah. Um, well, either either way, um, we're, we're getting into the 80s here. And I guess the, the classic archetypical thing of an 80s television family sitcom is it's all, it's all about the kids. Shit. Yeah, it's all about the family. And that's what we're emphasizing a lot in this episode is these two little fucking goons that these guys have. Because that's like the main, I don't know, the main meat of, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to fucking call this the cinematic House of M right now. For sure. Like House of M, obviously most of it isn't even about her family, but that's like what starts it all. Yeah. Is her wanting that family. Right. Well, and this and- is like the entire, like, I don't know. This is why I think it's like the second arc where we're actually in the family now, like mm-hmm. what she wants. Mm-hmm. Well, and it really is taking a direct plot from House of M. It is. It where, which is the family. Yes. Um. So, I mean, which is really crazy. I was chatting with somebody on Twitter earlier this week and I was like, Bro, who who would have thought that House of M would all of a sudden be the most relevant movie to the MCU? Just like w- that was the last thing I was ever expecting. Yeah, with mutants not even being a thing. That's well, because, like, I don't know, logistically, and with how the MCU is played out. Obviously, all the the X Men movie are mm-hmm. those Sony or those um, Fox? Fox? Yeah, they they're not canon. 
So right. they had no way to even do House of M unless fucking mm-hmm. Fox wanted to. And they've been yeah. dog as shit <laughs> at making X-Men movies. Yeah, they've been even pretty bad. since the first one. Yeah, we, we watched, I think, all of them with our friend I Ian. I loosely watched them, but yeah. yeah. They're all bad. I think the only ones I remember liking was Logan. Yeah, um, and that's like not Deadpool. a fucking X-Men movie. Right, Logan and Deadpool, but they don't really count. And as of the X-Men ones, I'm pretty sure I liked the first one. Like just literally X-Men. First one? Yeah, X-Men 1. X-1 or something? I, I think that one was probably the best of them all. I, I don't remember that one. Is that the one with Jean Grey in it? Or yes. is that the second one? That's, no, that is the one with Jean Grey they in it. have to save that fucking like bald kid? <laughs> I can't remember what the plot of that There was some fucking <laughs> like albino is. bald kid looking fucker Maybe. who was like some, I don't know, some god that they really needed. <laughs> I think the first one had to do with like Magneto or Did some it? shit. I don't know. There was some fucking <laughs> some bald kid. Well, now we're rambling about a very irrelevant set of movies. But ha 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 ha. Yeah, I guess now it's not so irrelevant it's anymore. It's not irrelevant. Which there's way, so many reasons we'll why. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. We'll save it for the end. But uh, I guess not. I've been yeah, they've out. been rumoring trying to get X Men and mutants into the been. MCU for a while now. They have been and. In this and episode, if you watch the app, you would know why. Yeah, in this episode, we get some uh, some lead way. You get the fucking sprinkle. <laughs> so mo- moving in, we got hung up on on a few things. Moving into like what goes on, Geraldine infiltrates the scene. Um, she, she literally reminds me of Becky Kimler or whatever. There's Becky. a chick, a chick from fucking Full House. Here, oh. I'll look it up. Yeah, Trevor has his. Uh, we we have an interesting setup going on. Trevor has his. Laptop hooked up to a little TV, and it's sitting on this clustered table. Uh, um, but I'm oh, viewing cool. his. Uh, What's her name? Kimmy Gibbler, Google. not Becky. Kimmy Gibbler. Yeah, let me look her. <laughs> See, up. I never watched Full House, dude. She Kimmy Gobbler. Yep. <laughs> look at her. Oh yeah, was she like the annoying neighbor? Yeah, she was the bitch ass annoying <laughs> fucking weird annoying. Damn. <laughs> Stupid Becky. No love for Becky. <laughs> The Kims. But well, she's interesting. She's cool. Uh, ah, this is irrelevant. Escape. Yes. Escape so, things a so bit. Kimmy Gibbler is in town. Yes, Kimmy Gibbler comes onto the scene. And this was maybe one of the most disturbing little like cursed interruptions in the beginning of this episode. It was the most direct curseness. Yes. And and what happens is there's some like kerfuffle about uh they're they're saying Kimmy take the kids. She's like, Can I take the kids? And then Vision, I think, is like, no. And then she goes like do you want to do that again? So you want to run those lines again? Yeah, it's like she turns to her to have like a candid. She went. She talk. like dr- fucking broke the fourth wall. Pretty much in the fourth wall. And and it was it's like it Deadpool. was handled. It was handled so eerily. It's like this is real life. Like right. what the fuck did you just say to me? Yeah, because Wanda reacts in confusion, and there's no score underneath or anything mm. like that. It's just silent. And it's she's like, like you want to take that real again? Life, and then someone just doing something that you absolutely. <laughs> Knew that they like fucking wouldn't. <laughs> right. It's like, wait, why are you like this? <laughs> and so, yeah, this this is a very cursed ass scene, which um, a, a connecting theme throughout this episode. And this has been ramped up in past episodes, uh, sort of as like a plot point that Vision is figuring out that there's something going Slowly on. Slowly but surely, like everybody. Yeah. And in this episode, I mean, he he directly confronts. Yes the uh the situation but it starts in this beginning scene where he pulls wanda aside and is like what the fuck was that <laughs> like he's just persistent yeah. about he's it. like i don't know he's kind of like comedically confused yeah. just like huh what the fuck was that because they Wanda's twine the, they, dead ass like yeah. terrified they twine laugh tracks in like all the time and so it, it just fucks with the whole like aura of the show which is what makes it so good. It's just like, what's real? AKA yeah. House of M. Right. Which I, I love that we've been talking about this through past episodes that they're intersecting like the sitcom film style with like real film Cinematic. style shots. Yeah. They're, they're mixing them more. And I really like that. Uh-huh. Um, like in this scene, they, they cut from sitcom all, and then have this whole aside that's like seriously handled. Uh-huh. You know, I, I just love that they're intersecting and playing with cameras like that. It's I mean, so You awesome. can literally tell the difference when, when they're in sitcom mode. Mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. Obviously, there's a difference between the sitcom mode and when they're doing like actual cinematic shit mm-hmm. look wise. But I think there, there's also like another layer when they're even in sitcom 
mm. like I don't know sitcom mode, but not dialogue sitcom mode. And they kind of like break break away. Yeah, but they're still in their like this realm. Right. And, well, that, and I feel like even that looks a little different. For sure. I can't tell why though. It is super weird. Um, but the way the way they have handled the cinematography in this show has been fucking so awesome. Yeah, it's it's been it's been great. Um, and so end gaming got shit on this. <laughs> what what movie? End game. Oh damn! You're like fuck them. End game was ass. Yeah, the VFX <laughs> down the drain. Um, speaking of weird effects, there's there's something that goes on in this show that's really weird. The kids, um, how do you animorphs. put this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got it. That's how you'd put it. They are fucking animorphs, um, and they they keep aging themselves up. It's like, it it's like the graph of the fucking I don't know, the trog slowly walking into becoming a human. Yeah, it's like that, but except they're they're just kids slowly walking and become adults. Right, and, and we'll talk a little more on this in a bit. But the the like rate at which they're aging themselves is really peculiar to me. They're it's, only aging themselves like up a couple X. years. Well, it's only, they're only aging up a couple years every time. Well, they I don't know. I can't guess how old they are here, but they're like four. Yeah, but then they go to like ten. Right, it's just like a strange interval. But they literally know. went from. Just being fucking born. Yeah, babies. To this. Right, to like to to toddlers. Whatever these kids are. Well, and we'll touch on that throughout the episode, but um, we get a little, an, you know, another pair, I guess parody. Would Dude. you call these parody intros? These songs? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Mock, mock intros uh, where they, they copy like a That is fu- a it's theme. fucking full house. Yeah, and they, they do it really well. They always nail it. Did like, you like this one? Yeah, oh, I loved it. Um, I thought it, I thought it was weird. I, well, a couple people were like, they did vision really dirty in a couple of these pictures. The fucking like when he looks intro like a where they like painted him looks oh, a little gosh. weird. Where they painted over him, I, I, I'm trying to like skim and find some of them, and I, it's it's hard to click and just nail it. <clears throat> but I thought it was strange that they were also including like real life pictures of the kids. They were like know. actors. That that was strange to me. I don't know why. Like, why the fuck am I seeing? actual picture of him right like you could tell it was candidly taken by their mom in real life that or it's like fake maybe a f- like a prop it lo- it was almost like too real <laughs> yeah <laughs> where i was like wait a second where it's like they could have literally taken a photo like that but just for the movie right but if they used actual family photos for that it looked like it well it looked like that's they also fucking, that's low-key kind of fucking weird it is weird well and it looked like they had like a teenage picture of elizabeth olsen in that really intro yeah um which i, I understand like donating like here's a young picture of myself mm-hmm. like here you go you can fucking but it's when you're a four-year-old help. yeah and their mom strange. is like you have no will you have no free will you're four i can do whatever yeah. i want well, and we don't really get to know any of these kids as actors as they keep aging themselves up into uh-huh. new actors, which is a part of the cursedness of it. And they go into the most, like, cringe age gap or age range of being, like, 10 to 12. <laughs> they do. I hate 10 to 12-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and so, as we're, as we're going through the whole sitcom stuff, we're flashing back to what Sword is up to with our boy Wu. Mm-hmm. Um and Monica Woo. Rambo, <laughs> they are they're pretty much they know what's going on when it comes to Wanda. They they understand what she, what she's doing and that she's manipulating everything, and they they can't really figure out a way to get in there. Yeah, they really don't know shit about shit right now, other than yeah. shit's fucked and yeah. it's Wanda's fault. Right, and they're 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 making more and more attempts to try and I guess get in there um and confront Wanda about it, and. Monica and Jimmy Woo and Darcy, they new have this whole chick. what's that? That new girl chick. That new girl chick. Yeah, she is straight up from New Girl. Um, they have this whole like aside about this pair of pants. Oh uh, yeah, I guess I don't really remember what they were talking about prior to this, but um what's her her name's Monica. I was mm-hmm. about to call her Geraldine. Oh yeah. Monica um, Rimbaud. Monica just had a fucking like kneeling, like let me have an idea, and then mm. she whipped out a gat. She whipped out the fucking <laughs> iron, and then started unloading on her pants. Right, and the explanation was that. See, this part confused me a bit. Here's what I my interpretation of it was that they said she walked in there with a bulletproof vest, uh-huh. and I I guess her pants also are bulletproof. They're made of Kevlar. See, so Wanda manipulated what was physically there, which was Kevlar, 
but I manipulated it away from a vest into pants. Yeah. Well, it's like when, when the everything got sent in there, it mm-hmm. physically got rearranged. Right. It physically changed. But so she walked in with a bulletproof vest. Yeah. And came and out like with a bunch of pants. fabric and clothes. And then yeah. she just rewrote all that, all those particles into something new. Right. And so it still kept the Kevlar particles and just right. put them into a different, I don't know, area. Which it, I thought was like a, a strange explanation. They utilize this theory later mm-hmm. on, which we'll get to. Um, but before that, there's this whole scene with Wanda and her kids, and they get a new puppy. Which yeah, is I don't interesting. Know, that, they, that puppy just fucking appeared. Yeah. It was just in the sink. Right, which is in typical sitcom fashion. Yeah. Like, no explanation. Just for, <laughs> for how the plot events armor. happen. Yeah. Plot just armor, like, it's a oh, sitcom universe. Right. We, we can we do f- whatever we want. <laughs> we found a uh, puppy. But the thing is, we all know Wanda's actually letting all of this happen, mm-hmm. um, which brings up something interesting for later on. Um, but they end up naming the dog Sparky, which is kind of cute. Um, the dog is pretty kind ugly, of. though, I will say. Fuck that name. <laughs> you don't like Sparky? No, it's like, oh, I have a kid. His name is Bob. <laughs> what you, what's wrong with Bob? Fuck dude? Bob. My dad's name is Bob. No, your dad's name is Lance. <laughs> <laughs> it really is Bob, though. It's Bobbert. <laughs> it's Bob. His yeah. government name is Bobbert. <laughs> well, the cursedness is not over because now we get to Vision. There was a curse at fucking interaction in goddamn every scene. <laughs> right, and and that's what everything's we were saying. cracking. Right, like the the cursedness is ramping to an all time high in this episode. And at first, they're reading an email from Darcy. Can we just appreciate how good fucking Vision, I don't, Paul, ben- Bentney. Paul Bentley, ben- he looks Bentley. so good. <laughs> he does look good. We were, we were talking about his haircut. Off He's so the awesome. Pod. Yeah, he, he is a great actor. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day. He was the voice originally of Jarvis back in like Iron Man 1. Really? Yeah. And that's, remember I Jarvis guess makes got sense turned. Because Jarvis turned into Vision. Yes. And so he has actually been a, an actor in the MCU since its inception. Because he was in Iron Man 1. Yeah. Like he didn't have like a lot of lines back no. then. But put some respect he on has Vision's been, name. He's been here the whole time. And he's just now getting his movie. Or just his now show. getting like. His face reveal. Which I have to say is awesome. So <laughs> he is a handsome guy. His teeth are perfect. His voice is perfect. Yeah. His voice is great. Some his of these, hair is amazing. His hair is great. The lighting does him a little dirty in some of these scenes and make him look real pink. He look maybe that's a, <laughs> I don't know. I think that Loki is the TV because on my it computer could. he doesn't look that red. Oh, he, he like, looked pink. I know that's a stylistic <laughs> choice to where it's like, haha, he's red as vision. But yeah. he's red. And, 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 and. I thought about that, but, but the TV would make sense. It's just the TV because he just looks fucking <laughs> we're, we're normal. We're just broke. <laughs> yeah. It, it looks gross, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, back to the show there. They're reading this email from Darcy. Everyone starts reading it in like cult fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, and Paul, he like finger finger absorbs energy from the computer he does some vision shit where he touches yeah. it and goes Zero. which i think is supposed to be connecting to the fact that vision has like a a mind stone in his head i don't think it's the mind stone right it can't be the the mind stone i'm pretty sure Thanos, well, i Thanos use the stones it. to destroy the stones <laughs> right uh, yeah that's a, see right. this is some fucking metaphysical shit uh, where yeah. it's like it's not a real mind stone because nothing yeah. is real exactly. here. Exactly, but but it's a it's as though he has the powers of the mind stone. It's because Wanda gave that to him, right? Because I, she has the power to make anything fucking real, right? And I imagine that Vision, with the capabilities of the mind stone, is how she last remembers him. So it would make sense that he, she would reanimate him with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I but, mean, it makes sense that he'd like this. None of this is real because there's that cursed fucking little like snippet at the end of one of those episodes where he's like zombified yeah missing the mind stone yeah yeah missing the mind stone well and he uses his mind stone powers he touches his friend herb um nope. norm there's this oh yeah this is norm not herb um he touches norm his co-worker and he like snaps him out of this trance and mm-hmm. it gets real fucking dark fuck <laughs> he's just like where where oh am my I? God. Where, where am fuck I? How many days? If it, yeah, yeah, like the classic. Where am I? <laughs> like right. I'm in a cave. <laughs> what Which, year is it? I will say 
this guy, whoever played Norm, mm-hmm. um, he killed it in this scene because once mm-hmm. Vision snaps him back, he like immediately snaps back into like the sitcom Some split level so, acting. Yes, it was like a split moment. I loved it. I wanted to like specifically shout him out for that because that was great. Shout if out I to the send team. an email, or would the stamp go? <laughs> well, that yuck was pretty funny. It's like, wow, you're so unfunny. <laughs> it was funny. The eighties were so unfunny. Right. It, it was funny in the ironic sense. Um, but <laughs> okay, we go back to Wanda um, with the kids with the dog. Um, sparky sparky i can't remember what this scene was all about i they think they send in a drone to go talk yeah. to wanda and so, everybody comes outside okay and she tries to be like wanda wanda yeah, yeah. hey hep, hep, come I, in i got a few questions coming up here so mm. first of all what was the whole how did the whole pants thing connect to the drone pants yeah the, they I, I thought there was some connection with like they send in the drone like whatever revelation monica had with the pants led to the idea of let's send in a drone. I could be misremembering the like was it? sequence of I events. Thought, I don't think it's connected. Okay. I thought that I thought the what if we send in something that's not real was something else. I don't know though. See that and that's I, I remember some so of that here. language, so I thought there was a connection. How far um, from this part was the pants thing? The pants was like the last time we saw Monica in that. Pants. Seven. Which also I, I wanted to shout out something um about the pants scene. <laughs> about the pants. <laughs> There's a little line that Monica drops in that that people are talking about where Monica says, like, Oh, I know an astrophysicist that would want to take a look at that. Yeah, and everyone's like, Who about? the fuck is she referring to? Um, and there's a couple theories. Some people think it's Reed Richards, and I'm like, eh. See, I can, I never. I when she says astrophysicist, Reed is just a genius, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. he's nothing. He's no title, right? I could not, I couldn't call that, but right. it makes sense, right? Some some people are saying Ironheart because she has an upcoming thing, but I say she's too young, and so here's what the person I think it is, it's and Victor Von Doom. That would be sick. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick. People, people also theorize, and I think this one's the most valid, that it's going to be Blue Marvel. Mm. His name is like, I think like uh, Nick Bradshear or something like that. He was in the Doctor Doom series, mm-hmm. written by oh, Yeah, He was the one who got sent to like the middle of the fucking yes. black hole. Yes, that was that guy. Um, I think it's going to be him. And I think that would be awesome because he's a really cool character. I ain't no shit about him. He he has like superpowers. Mm. He's he is like a Superman type figure. Apparently, he's really powerful on some like power levels type shit. Uh, um. So I hope it's that guy. Um. um but back to the whole pants drone thing. Um, I don't know. But drone gets sent in. Yeah. She fucking H four X's it. <laughs> Wanda right. hacks it and just totally takes over it. So then I had a I had a whole quarrel with this upcoming scene. Uh-huh. So. Monica, she like, yeah, she <laughs> H4X. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. know if people are going to get that reference. It's hack. <laughs> it spells hack. H4X. It's, a, a, it's a, a fucking inside joke. You wouldn't that is understand. An ancient inside joke with us since we were like 10 or some it's shit. The days of Black Ops 1. Oh, God. Okay. Well, we'll stop. <laughs> we'll stop the nostalgia train. Oh, God. But for those listening, me and Trevor have known each other a lot of years. Very long. You know that Aesop Rock song? A lot of years. A lot, a lot of yeah. years. <laughs> anyway, so Monica, or excuse me, not Monica, Wanda, she walks out of the portal with the drone. She's kicked its ass. It's in like this red magic hex shit. Um, I don't know if she kicked its ass. I think that was her like overpowering yeah, it. Yeah. She like disabled it or whatever. Yeah. And so she comes out and she just chucks it at them and she's pretty much gets this whole like, don't fuck with me type she shit. She whips her fat cock out and <laughs> hey, shows whoa. it to everybody. <laughs> she goes, hey. Wow. Look at this. She did. She did though. She, yeah, she definitely right. showed the power. She showed the dong. <laughs> well, and so my my problem with this scene isn't Monica supposed to be? Or Mon, I keep saying Monica. Is it Wanda supposed to be crazy and like not crazy? I guess, but like like in House of M level crazy. Maybe not that level of crazy, but this scene she, is very like I don't know if we're on, if we're talking sanity levels. It's clearly like premeditated. Like she. It's like, it was like, oh, fuck, these people are fucking with me. I'm going to go tell them stop fucking with me. That's a very, like, sane rationale of, like, response where yeah. if she was kooky and crazy. I don't think she's crazy. Well, but I was led to believe that she is because she's creating this whole sitcom I don't think universe it's... and housing herself and her loved ones in it that are dead. That's See, pretty crazy. Well, the way that I look at it, I don't know if it's, like, fucking she snapped and is, like, out of control. Yeah. I think it was low-key a little... 
I don't know, premeditated, but not to just be like, I don't know if her intentions was to like, oh, I'm going to fuck with these people. Mm -hmm. She was just like, well, shit happens. I like, I want the outcome of having a family and I don't know, I'll just fucking do what I can. It's not like she intended to just fucking take control of people. Like that's what she wanted. So I don't think she's like crazy. But I, I, I think, think the she's whole, just super grieving. I guess, but she's grieving in a like psycho. No, it's definitely not fucking normal. <laughs> but she isn't like kooky and wacky and fucking yes. out like in psychosis. Well, and I guess my point is when she, when she left this sitcom verse by like literally walking out of the portal or mm-hmm. the or that they kept referring to the wall as the hex. I don't know how I feel about that name. I think it's a weird thing. Is that name. what they were calling the hex? Yeah. The hex is just the wall or the, the force field. field. Yeah. Which, whatever. Um, I guess the it relates. The fucking uh, Savage Avengers Zero <laughs> wall. <laughs> yes. Yes. The the most, like, insider reference we've made. If you guys actually read comics. <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, when she walks out of this hex, because she's, like, I don't know. I, just the concept of her taking her family and making this fake sitcom scenario mm-hmm. and having them live out their lives in that scenario. I guess I I was anticipating that she would be kooky and crazy pending leaving that safe space. If that makes sense. She might low key end up that way, but I think yeah. this was just like, hey, well, it's like she literally said, "This is your only warning." Right. And I'm gonna go fucking bat shit, and I'm right. gonna go cuckoo, cuckoo for goddamn cocoa puffs. Right. Which I, yeah, so I guess I'm, because I'm anticipating her going cuckoo, like, like as you put it, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Other than that fucking <laughs> beat, I guess this is jumping ahead. Mm. Um, I was about to say, nothing has like ever directly like interfered with her yet. Yeah. And this was like the first literal direct, like almost you could call it an attack. Right. That's probably how she views it. And so yeah. she hasn't, I don't know. If this continues to happen, she's probably going to go fucking insane. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And I guess my line of questioning is I'm just even, I'm just trying to generally grasp what Monica is like going through, you know, because we're still kind of asking Wanda? ourselves like what's going on. With you mean her. Wanda or? Or do I keep saying Monica? Damn it. Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> Wanda. Anywho, but speaking of, and I'm saying this right, Monica, they have a whole little standoff. Mm-hmm. I saw people clipping scenes. From this one this was a cool scene it was a cool scene and then she f- she did the whole like wrist twist and it, <laughs> like, <laughs> and it i have made, magic fucking powers right and it made all the soldiers point their guns at the guy oh you're harry potter bro <laughs> like, this, Which, is, this is how magic works hot take maybe I, don't, I think the way that wanda does magic where she like floats her hands really creepily it's cool and it's witch-like i'll give you that but it's just weird it's, i don't know it doesn't translate well in real life where the like, like doc, the Doctor Strange stuff does look good. Yes, because he's like doing it a fucking tactical motion. <laughs> he is drawing with his hands. He's not right. fondling it, the aura right. that she's creating. But I, but I'll agree. It it is like a witchy vibe. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. I I wish they just it was a little different. I'm yeah. nitpicking. I wish they just didn't do that. <laughs> I wish they just did it. So then we come back to the sitcom verse, and um, Sparky got capped. By a bush. <laughs> a fucking... Some bush. Some bush. It's like, oh, my bush is so poisonous. Then my question with this scene, did Monica make that happen? You mean Wanda. What? You mean Wanda. I fucking A. I keep saying Monica. <laughs> yes. Did Wanda make that happen? Or did this chick fucking... Well, I don't know. Agnes or something? Who? The, are you talking the, like, curly Kimmy. hair? Kimmy Gibbler? <laughs> yes. She could low key be a fucking like agent of something because she yeah. doesn't seem phased by any of this curse shit. Well, she, yeah. she, I mean, she literally did the curse shit. Yeah. So there, what the was, fuck was that? She did seem phased at, in this scene, actually. Remember when? So, just to fill in the gaps a little bit, the Sparky ate some bush, uh-huh. and got poisoned. The kids are like, bring the dog back, mom. Which is kind of cut. Yeah, I have a theory. Maybe, maybe yeah. this chick killed the fucking dog yeah. just to show, just because she knew the kids would know that her mom could bring it back, mm. and she could like could indirectly be. push like an awkward fucking interaction to bring out I like, suppose. hey mom, you can bring back the bed. It's like you've confirmed it. Yeah, she's a she's fucking a coup from the inside. <laughs> well, and I, I was thinking of the scene where 
where the kids say, bring bring back the dead. And mm-hmm. then this girl, and Agnes, went, goes, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Which was just kind of like, I don't know, the acting was good in that scene. Mm-hmm. Have to nod that one. Um, but then Paul, <laughs> Paul Bettany shows up and just gives everyone a pat. Did the then, 80s dad shit like yeah it's okay right Hug. but another weird thing about that scene that i i realize maybe i'm nitpicking a little bit but i ha- i have my opinions uh-huh. <laughs> and i stand by them um wanda i got it right that time when the dog dies she kneels down and immediately is like don't age up don't age up yeah. to the kids i thought that was kind of weird it's like she acknowledged the no, whole I th- dynamic I mean, it made sense it made sense i guess but she's i, I mean know. i think it was weird to like just t- address it so like bluntly. Well, you know I, th- I, mean? I think that was tactical yeah. because I think she's just getting so fucking like stressed out and everything's cracking that yeah. she's just losing all of her okay. sense of like yeah holding back. Like oh fuck it, hey hey, don't age up. That makes sense actually. Because yeah. even even goddamn uh, Vision when that weird shit happened at first, he was like right. she didn't even was she wasn't even phased when they oh, oh Jesus Christ, oh my God. Sorry, guys, I unplugged my mic like a fucking dingus. And then Audition hated him and <laughs> yeah, stopped audition everything. Audition shits itself if you, if you stop recording it. Okay, um, but as you were saying, Trevor, Yes, I guess. Um, I was talking about the fucking Kimmy Gibbler chick. Yes. So I was, I think I was saying, like, she wasn't phased when they grew up the first time. Right. And so I think that's, that's, that's like true. a hint that she might, I don't know, she might just <clears throat> fully know what the fuck's happening. Right. Well, wasn't she on the board that Jimmy Woo made? The board. Yeah, like the oh. board of missing persons. Well, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. So, but I mean, was what she? you're saying is still could be true. But I think the yeah. board confirms that she was just a resident of Westview. Yeah. Or Eastview. Or I don't know. The yeah, I guess is. I don't know. Maybe she's not like an agent. Yeah. But she is def- sus. Because she is sus. But I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe she's still under that mind control, and this is just fucking like like some malware happening in Wanda's that could be. anomaly code. Where yeah. It's like, this wasn't supposed to happen. It just fucking happened. And that's why yeah. she's so confused. That does make sense. And the like, maybe whatever her name is, like, I'm going to keep calling her Agnes. I don't know if that's her name. It's something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she does seem like, I don't know. She seems not okay with what's going on. Agnes? So sometimes, like at certain points, she has seemed like not okay with it. Like, I guess I'm specifically thinking of when her and Herb were trying to find Monica, uh-huh. and they were like, "She's not from here." They were taking like an aggressive, I don't know, like stance. I suppose you know what I mean. Yeah, that was cursed. That was she weird. was like very oppositional to, <laughs> to yes. this outsider. Right. Well, we could theorize all day. Is she married to Herb? I don't know. Does she have her own home? Does she have a husband? <laughs> Does she have kids? I'm not sure. The fuck? I'm still asking who they're going to copy for the 90s episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking... <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld's about to be in this episode. It, yo, that would be a godly cameo. If they got Seinfeld. <laughs> Ooh, or like some Friends bullshit. Yo, Friends could be the... Ni- is Friends 90s or is that 2000s? Know. 90s into 2000s. 90s into 2000s. Maybe the late 90s. I could see that. Well, either way, that would be great. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but along aside, aside, um, when Paul Paul Bettany comes home. He's talking to Wanda, and he now he starts confronting her. Yeah, he's. This is like, are they still in sitcom mode when they're talking? In like, this scene, I guess. Okay, this is going to be confusing, but you know how in the last episode they were showing how the show like mm-hmm. what we watch has mm-hmm. like jump cuts and how yeah. she like metaphysically records certain parts of her life they were talking about it. it yeah when they have this fight mm-hmm. is that being broadcasted do you think i think the beginning part was and when the credits roll well no i guess it all was broadcasted because remember at the end end darcy makes a comment remember uh, during the the last scene where with the cameo not the cameo but the appearance of the person not spoiling it yet do you remember Darcy's like what so who's Darcy the girl the uh, new girl girl oh she's not from new girl she's from two broke girls oh yeah yeah that's Darcy she's like what so it was all broadcasted was it oh, okay <laughs> right right 
but but what what well, we're they talking couldn't have about broadcasted her literally saying or fucking i guess let's just get into it yeah. right they get into a fight yes they, they get into a fight and uh vision is like pr- pretty much confronting her about the situation with directly Norm. attacking like right the entire situation and, and he finds out want okay and so i'm paused actually on a frame here that has a crazy cold line but vision's like you can't control me anymore and wanda just says can't i dude like, like i said villain. she whips out the fat cock and shows everybody <laughs> see this is some villain shit oh she's low-key kind of a villain yeah she's being villainous which i guess this is maybe more so the maybe the breaking point i was referencing earlier that this is kind of the first inklings of that of her going nuts oh yeah you know so it's like she is about a, like in the fucking as the fight progresses mm-hmm. he keeps like pointing out shit that he's finding out like i don't know yeah. who i am i don't know any life before right. westview i fucking hacked right. i h4 act <laughs> norm's brain and what? brought out his suppressed <laughs> reality right. why are there no kids in westview oh my god <laughs> every morning i walk by the park oh uh, well anyway and then he fucking yells at her yes this and goes, starts floating right and then goes, she starts floating <laughs> that's why i'm like right. okay you're going fucking insane right now right the, they go marriage story really hard with it um, they go fat cock to fat cock in that scene. <laughs> they do. Before that, there's a really cool visual thing with the credits, how Wanda yeah. cuts them off. And the, and not only that, but the credits are rolling during like their acting. Yeah. That was and cool. And then he is just like, fuck the credits. Well, and then if you notice too, once the credits stop rolling, Vision goes full Vision. Like his, yeah, when, he goes once metal. he walks back into the door. Yeah. See, that's when I think that they stop recording. Yeah. Because obviously they don't want to record showing Vision. Maybe... Well, they 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 do record it on the show. Do they? Yeah, like yeah, well, that's right. That's a part know of like the joke. Vision. Yes, um, but the, he he doesn't want to appear as Vision in front of the other randoms. Yeah, the noobs. <laughs> but they they have this whole fight, um, which the acting here is great. Awesome. Fucking Paul Paul Bettany steals this scene. Easy. He must have actually gotten a fight with her. <laughs> he, they was definitely channeling some fucking Dude. real life shit. I want to see the like. The fucking raw footage of him floating on what that would have looked like of him just yelling on like a wires <laughs> being raised up. Right. With the, 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 they put on like a diaper. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> and then they have the. It's like those trampoline right. things where you can like jump really high. <laughs> right. Well, and they're yelling at each other and it's, he's, yeah, like you were saying, attacking her about. Um, he's confronting like, her, This yeah. isn't right. And yeah, he starts getting crazy. He's like, he's he's like scared. I'm scared. Yeah, he's he's getting uh, dark with it. Uh-huh. Um, so then Wanda sits down. Vision looks at his boner. <laughs> he's like, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Which we kept joking about that right here. She like she he's like says something down. Him. Yeah, and he looks and he down says, and right at it. He's just like, oh my god. She went, I didn't do that. <laughs> It's like Which, I grew a dick. And super, now I have a boner. I don't know. I, I mean, he was just supposed to be sad. Of course, we're some weirdos. So we're yes. like, Yo, she Lord. says, I didn't do that to the doorbell ringing. <laughs> yes. And well, that, I mean, she almost, she's even fucking like revealing that she's doing all this to yeah. him yeah. because she's like, hey, I didn't do that. I did everything else, but that doorbell right. wasn't me. Right. Or like, can't I control you? It's like, can't I? Um, And so then we get to the scene this is this took oh, this the fucking the world scene. what's that this was the best scene ever the best scene it took the fucking internet by crazy fandom yes, it's just like it, it, this scene is like bigger than the show itself it is because it 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 has so much more like meaning and pack and like yes. just umph. yes and like when you re- like obviously you guys can't see it jace no. is gonna throw it up on the uh on the, on the video thing, but for sure. yep a certain somebody. Certain somebody. We've teased it maybe enough. They have the doorbell ring. Wanda goes to answer. And guess who? it's quick fucking silver. Mm-hmm. However. And guess who? Quicksilver. It is not uh, whatever his name is. Like Aaron the or Irrelevant Adam. motherfucker. It's, it is straight. And this is what was the most shocking part. It was not the Quicksilver that had been previously casted in Age of Ultron. It is Evan Peters <laughs> from the, the X-Men verse. Yes. The uncanon. Oh, now they made it canon. This, the, I mean, we watched it together. This had me fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> this had me so fucked up. <laughs> Dude. I mean, it just means so much for the future. Like. One, feature for the show, yes. obviously. 
big plot point. Mm-hmm. Future for MCU. Oh future for X Men mo- like cinematic X Men. What could it mean? What legal loopholes did this thirty second fucking clip have to take? <laughs> Like, how many deals did they have to make? Be like, okay, you can use that character now. Right. Probably millions of dollars in legal fees. Well, I mean, what happened was, remember, uh, Disney acquired Fox, Mm -hmm. and then it was a done deal. Yeah. (laughs) All they had to do was buy an entire fucking network. Yep. And they did it. All for Quicksilver. All for for Peter. All for Evan Peters. (laughs) Which, so. At the end of the day, is Loki a cucky? (laughs) <laughs> kind of a cucky Quicksilver, but yeah. I, I like him. Well, and, and to give like just a, a brief explanation for maybe some people who might not know, um, the he was Quicksilver in the X-Men movies and some people liked him more. Mm-hmm. Personally, I did because he had some infamous scenes. Yeah, I know the scenes that he was in were fucking awesome. Yes. But and, it's just like as a whole, he seems yes. like just this like fucking w- white suburban like right. yuck. Well, and, and they took a hugely different approach in the X Men movies than they did in Age of Ultron. Yeah. The He's Pietro just, we know in Age of Ultron was kind of like cool and suave. He's cool, suave, Sokovian. Yes, very Sokovian. But then this Pietro, Evan Peters, is kind of goofy. Lives in his mom's fucking basement. Yeah, teenager. They did not have the whole uh, Magneto son thing. I was about to say, wasn't yeah. he, wasn't that the like, oh, you're my dad? Which I don't know. Maybe some people will fact check me on that, but I don't think they did that in the movies. They might have alluded to it. No, they, I'm pretty point. sure they did. Did they? There was this, I'm pretty sure that, like, either he was confronted by someone to tell him, mm. or he already knew. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Well, either way, uh, Wanda wasn't in the X Men movies. Yeah, and so this was kind of like a star-studded combination that I never, ever, ever expected. I in a million years did not expect it. Yeah. However, I was Team Quicksilver. It's like, it's the feeling of seeing <laughs> fucking Rorschach and Batman in the same yeah. comic. It's like, yeah. you're technically in the same universe, but you're not. Right. And, and it's just weird. But what this could mean is that Kevin Feige may already be working on recasting all of the people in X-Men as themselves, mm. which would be insane. That would be so fucking crazy. We would get... Oh my God, where do we even start? We'd get John McAvoy, James McAvoy as fucking Professor X. Oh, we would awesome. get, um oh, Michael Fassbender, right? Is that his name? For fucking Magneto. For Magneto. We might get Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I feel like Hugh Jackman's like, I never want to play fucking Wolverine ever again. He said that, except he straight up said, unless it's with Marvel Studios. Oh. Yes, <laughs> bro. They're going to have to re they're probably going to have to recast Mystique cuz I heard Jennifer yeah. Lawrence is like oh, I yeah. don't want to do her again. Well, now that CGI is so much better yeah. and and special effects are so much better, I'm sure it wouldn't be as hellish yeah. for her cuz I'm sure she did hours of makeup every day for like 5 hours a day. Disgusting. 5 6 hours a day. I could never. It's like you do that for 5 hours then you go shoot for 10. Yeah. Um, is crazy. So th- this could mean so much. I'm yeah. crazy. I mean, obviously, Deadpool is is coming to the MCU. That's we know. Fact. Um, so many mutants. And so th- this is mutants. super significant because this could be the start of it. We don't know how. We could get some actually good mutant movies. I would cry, <laughs> and so would our friend Ian. Dude. Dude. And yeah, none of the X-Men movies are good, Fuck as we were the, saying. These legal wars between I companies. I know. I it, hate, it fucking sucks. I mean, it all it comes down to our fucking capitalist society <laughs> is awful. It, I mean, Everything it is. Everything's run by money. Yeah. You know, it sucks that the corporatism does have to like ruin just like something so innocent as can we just have these characters like appear you, together? Obviously, you guys don't actually give a shit that we're happy. You no. just give a shit that you make money. Which, if anything, Sony is being kind of the the prick amongst them all because they have held on to with Spider Man white white knuckled, yeah, white knuckle like, holding we'll on to never it. Never, never Spider Man. Which it's working out for them. They got the games. They got the movies. It's making them money. But it's, it's Sony. Money, but it's not making us happy. No, it's not. But they they've been nice too because apparently uh, Tom no not Toby Tom. McGuire no who's who's uh who's our boy um who's playing Spider Man right now Tom Holland Tom Holland he apparently is gonna appear in Venom or in the Venom verse Venom two I don't know if it's gonna be Venom two but the, I think the deal has been made that he can like legally appear 
as Spider-Man in those movies. Because they're both Sony, right? Yes, which Sony does own parts of, like it has ownership in Homecoming, and I'm pretty sure Far From Home, because they still do own the rights to Spider-Man. That's what I'm saying. It's not yeah. like a Marvel. Well, they are Marvel Studios, but it, a deal was worked out. Yeah, they like out. almost like licensed him out. Pretty much. I, I think it's maybe the gist of it. I, we could be fake newsing pretty yeah. hard. It's, it's like sampling some music. <laughs> yeah. It's like you have be. to pay the fee to use it. Right. Which I, th- I think part of the deal is that Sony is probably going to make money off of these films. And whenever they use Spider-Man, you know, they get a cut of it all. It's like literally all you guys have to do is say yes and you make money right you say no you lose money right which sony's about to be rolling in bands because once all uh once all three spider-men andrew garfield mm-hmm. toby mcguire and tom holland all appear in spider-man 3 the the, the i'm going crazy with it but the, the people are going to be buying those first few spider-man movies at an increased rate probably so they're going to be rolling in bread think about all the <laughs> little kids who never watched yeah. the first spider-man movie so they don't know but and they like all they shame. know is Tom Holland. Yeah, which maybe maybe they're better off for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't need to see Spider Man three. Well, how'd you feel about Evan Peters? Um, that was portrayal. Great. No, I, that was yeah, awesome. He was really funny in this scene. <laughs> what did he fucking say? He was, he was like, like, "Can can a guy give his sister a squeeze?" Yeah, it's like, "Can a stinking sister give his brother a squeeze?" <laughs> and then he who's was like, popsicle? "Yeah, who's the popsicle?" Who's <laughs> 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 the popsicle? Which that that, that, that was credits. funny. Um, and then it laugh track ended straight up. That's awesome. It was a, a great ending. It had everyone kind of fucking jaw dropped. It left dropped. no time for the people to react, so it was like a perfect ending. Fucking perfect ending. And so I guess boom. That's pretty much. With what that being we got. said, bye. <laughs> all right bye <laughs> time to do Shortest the worst outros. ending to a podcast <laughs> what if we started just hi so it's we watch wandavision this is what no happened. <laughs> no hi so it's just like yeah so this episode wandavision do this <laughs> oh my god well oh. there isn't much to plug here but thank you guys for listening we've been doing this wandavision for what this will be our fifth we're over episode. a month in now our fourth episode now yeah we're a month in um and we have four more episodes left crazy two months we and then another month we um I, I thought about us doing a live react to it, but they dropped the new Falcon Winter Soldier trailer. Looks crazy. We get some to see some new characters in it. Zemo. They give us some full Zemo shots. Which Has is, he ever been in any of the like Well, so he was in, he in Winter Civil- Soldier and um or not Winter Soldier. He was in Civil War. But did he wear the fucking the Zemo cowl? No, he was not pink Zemo cowl yet. But now he is. Which is lit. And so I was thinking about us doing a live react, but eh. Um, but hey, if you're listening, go check that out. It's going to be dope because we are also most likely going to be covering Falcon Winter Soldier Probably, yeah. as it drops because that's I think it's going to be like six parter and it's going to be like once a week or something like that in March, March 18th, as we saw. It's, and it's, so it's going to be like we get a new fucking Marvel movie every week. Let's fucking go. I mean, yeah, it's, it. it's going to be sweet. One, two, three, four. You said March what? I think March. I, see, I don't know. If you back out of where you're at, it'll you can go to the homepage. It should oh, yeah. show you when it drops. I think it was the 18th or the 19th or something. Went to my um, March but 19th. I'm super pumped for that. The trailer looks just nuts. I mean, it looks like it's going to be definitely like the opposite of what's going on in WandaVision. Yeah, we got like true. It. I mean... Who, who's to fucking say? I think this was Def's their attempt at like, I think the reason why they wanted to do this one first was obviously because it it sets up a lot of new sh- new mm-hmm. upcoming shit. And then it also almost just like clears up a lot of like yeah. bridges between Endgame and everything else. For sure. And so maybe this was just like, we need something interesting. Yeah. Then we can do like, I'm not going to say normie shit. Yeah. I know what you mean. Though. But like. But action. Yeah, just like what kind of what we expected. Because we, we've been saying that this WandaVision show has been a super different take. Super like conceptual cinematic take. Mm-hmm. Like it's shot like nothing I've ever seen. And right. It's written like nothing I've ever seen. The 19th. Yeah, 19th. Um, so yeah, that, that ought to be exciting. Can't wait for that. Um, but One, that's two, pretty three. much all I have to plug. If you guys like the show, subscribe, like all that bullshit that YouTubers say. Like I say, run the fuck up. <laughs> run, run, run the, the fuck, fuck up, up please. Run the fucking cloud up. <laughs> <laughs> pump that run shit up run the numbers up run please. the numbers up um and we will see you guys next week for episode six let's go let's go see you guys peace out the dobbler fight wait are you recording she i know <laughs> take that <laughs>